So, as I said, I'm going to focus on the egalitarian rule today. And as you may remember, egalitarian rule is described, or sort of the notation we use is E. SD is the bargaining problem with the disagreement point D. The bargaining set is S. Uh, it is described as arg max. Um, X is coming from individually rational uh, payoff set. And then minimize I in N. N is the set of players. Uh, Xi minus Di. Okay? So that's a one ugly looking uh, uh, sort of uh, um, uh, description. So don't forget... In the numerical example, I have two players, all right? So I have player one and player two. So what these, well, in this case, therefore, what is the egalitarian rule really look like? Well, in this case, then, the egalitarian rule is basically, again, argmax, min. It's basically minimizing two things, either x1 minus d1 or x2 minus d2. Okay, so whichever is the min, well, then I maximize by choosing x from the individually uh, rational payoff vectors. Um, this is, by the way, why I very, uh, I use the min function or the Leon TF utility function in my micro courses a lot because, uh, you know, that type of function we use in economics a lot. Um, and so, uh, you know, spending time with those is, is very useful, uh, not just for microeconomics, but uh, in, in many other fields, uh, for example, here in the bargaining and the cooperative bargaining theory. So I have two players that are negotiating to split a surplus. This example is very much like the other examples in my lecture videos. So they're going to uh, uh, share a uh, like a cake of size one, all right? We normalize the size to one. Um, so the surplus is y, and it's something in between zero and one. Um, well, what is the utility for each player? Utility of player one is one minus y. Uh, I'm not done with it yet. And utility of player two is y, normally, right? Uh, for example, this is what we assume in Rubinstein alternating over bargaining game. But that actually means, uh, well, first it means, for example, if they split the cake equally, so y is equal to one half, player two gets half, player one gets half. If they split it, uh, if y is, for example, one over four, that means player one gets uh, the bigger portion, the three quarter, and player one gets only the quarter of the cake. But these utility functions mean uh, the uh, both players are risk neutral. However, I want to make them risk averse. All right. So therefore, uh, if they consume the surplus y, player two, his utility is not going to be y. His utility is going to be squared of y. And, and similarly, player one's utility is one minus y square root. All right. Well. That's it. So the question is, what would be the egalitarian uh, solution according to egalitarian rule? Well, we first uh, need to draw the um, budget on a budget. I'm sorry, uh, the uh, feasible uh, payoff uh, set or the bargaining set. So how do we do that? Well, remember, this is U1 versus U2. Um, well, when we drove the bargaining set, the bargaining set, the coordinates are the utilities of each player, all right? Um, it's in, in some lecture notes, probably, I used x1 instead and x2 instead of u1, u2. So here, x1 refers to utility level, all right? Same here. So this xi is how much utility player i is going to get, okay? So be careful about it. It's not like how much surplus he's going to get. Xi means how much utility player i is going to get. So be careful about it. Uh, well, so because the surplus is going to uh, be in different 0, 1, the lowest utility player to get is when y is equal to 0, right? So when y is equal to 0, utility of player 2 is 0. 
utility of player one is one square root, which is one again. All right, well, the maximum utility player two can get is y, when y is equal to one, in which case his utility is one. Player two, one's utility is, however, zero. So therefore, uh, you know, these two points, like uh, for player one, one, player two, zero, or the second point where player one gets zero utility, player two gets one utility. Okay, so I have to connect these two points in some way. Uh, because both of those are in the bargaining set. They are feasible. Uh, but what else? Well, you probably need to pick just one more point. So let's pick here one health, one health. But is it in the bargaining set? Uh, or what is the boundary of the uh, bargaining set? We are actually interested in the boundary. Well, here, when surplus is equal to one health, all right, uh, the utility of player two is going to be square root of one half, which is like 0.7, I guess. And same for player one, right? When y is one half, uh, player one is also going to get one half square root. And so his utility is also 0 0.7, 0 0.7. All right. Let's say somewhere here. So you know what? Uh, probably, I mean, roughly, the... Uh, bargaining set is going to look something like this and obviously everything inside because remember uh, they can actually um, just waste some of the surplus um, I mean if, if they want uh, they can they do not have to consume uh, the cake entirely they can just waste it um, and so everything inside this area is also a part of bargaining uh, problem, but you know, I mean, no bargaining, a reasonable bargaining solution is is, is going to give us some point inside this set. Anyhow, we're going to get some point on the curve. All right, but which point exactly? Well, to pin this out, we need to know the D, right? The uh, disagreement point. And for this specific example, I pick D as one over four, one over two. All right, so player one gets one over four, player two gets one over two in case of disagreement. All right, well, if this is the disagreement point, well, first of all, this is the set of individual irrational payoffs. All right, so this is I S D. Okay, so the a bargaining solution, according to egalitarian rule, is somewhere on, on, this, uh, on this smaller set. We know it's going to be predo-optimal, weak predo-optimal, meaning it, is, it has to be on the boundary. Okay, but where exactly? So how do we find it? Well, if you... Uh, the geometric description of each rule is actually very useful when you want to uh, numerically solve these rules. If you remember, uh, the egalitarian rule uh, geometrically is the following point. You find the disagreement point and then draw a 45 degree line. All right, so this is a 45 degree line starting from the disagreement point. Well, why is that so? Well, because remember, I'm trying to maximize some function which has x1 minus d, x2 minus d. So when this thing is minimized, well, when these two guys are equal to each other, for that reason, we have the 45 degree line because of the min function. Remember, min xy, if you have a, a function, remember this from the utility maximization problem. We actually maximize this utility function. So, and remember, this is always going to be maximized when x is equal to y. So that's important. So for that reason, we have the 45 degree line. But be careful where this 45 degree line starts is, is critical. For example, this is also a 45 degree line, right? And it starts from the zero, zero point. Well, we need to draw the 45 degree line, which starts from the disagreement point because of this x1 minus d minus d2 business, okay? So, not this 45, but this 45 degree line. So this one is the line x1 minus d1 equals x2 minus d2. I mean, the first term equals the second term. So, all right, so this is that line, uh, this 45 degree line. Well, what about this curve? If I find this curve, well, then 
I can find this point of intersection. How? Just set them equal. This is how we find the point of intersection. So how do I find this curve? Well, this curve is x2 equal some function of uh, x1, right? So I need to find this function. Huh. Okay, so remember, by the way, I said u1 actually means x1. So let's use this notation. So ignore u1, u2 business. So I don't want to confuse you. And u2 actually means x2. All right, so I need to write x2 as a function of x1. How can I do that? Well, relate both of them uh, as y. And, or let's put it this way. Uh, write y as a function of x1 and then plug it here. Uh, I'm going to be able to relate x2 with x1. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. So how do I do that? Uh, stop me anytime you want. So when I look at this, x1 equals 1 minus y square root. Well, I need to pull y alone. Um, so that means take the square of both sides. x1 square equals 1 minus y. Uh, send y here x1 squared to the other side, 1 minus x1 squared. All right, so this is what y is. Well, then plug it back here, x2 equals y to the power 1 half. So y is equal to this guy, 1 minus x1 squared, square root. So this is how x2 and x1 are related. So I found this f, okay? So this curve is therefore x2 equals 1 minus x1 squared, uh, square root. All right. Well, then all I have to do, set them equal, these two things, and solve for x1 and x2. Well, how do I do that? Well, simple. Here, x2 is alone. So therefore, I also need to uh, pull x2 here alone. So send d2 to the other side. What do I get? I have x2 equals x1 plus x, uh, d2 minus d1. Remember, I already know d1 and d2 values. So this is d1, right? This is d2, the outside, uh, the disagreement uh, uh, point for player 1 and 2. So d2 minus d1 is 1 half minus 1 over 4. So this is x1 plus 1 half minus 1 over 4. So basically, it's x1 plus 1 over 4. Okay? Um, all right, well, what about this? So I know that x2 is equal to also 1 minus x1 squared, 1 half. So I just set them equal. So these two guys are equal uh, because this point of intersection means their x2 and x1 are equal, right? So therefore, I have what? Uh, x1 plus 1 over 4 equals 1 minus x1 squared, 1 half. I'm not going to solve it because I already did and, and it's not an integer. So I needed to, I needed a calculator. So x1 is approximately, by the way, um, 0.48. And once I find x1, how can I find x2? Well, simple. It's just x2 equals x1 plus quarter, remember? So therefore, just add 0.25 to this one. So therefore, x2 is approximately 0.73. All right, that's it. But don't forget, uh, oh, when I say that's it, this is this vector 0.48 comma 0.73. This vector x is going to... Uh, solve this max min uh, uh, equation or it is the argument so this is the argument that maximizes uh, this min function so therefore this is in fact e of sd and it's unique by the way if it wasn't unique i would i i i, I would get another x1 value and therefore another x2 value but i just get only one x1 and one x2 so therefore it's unique all right so this is the egalitarian rule solution uh, but it doesn't say anything about how they are going to uh, split this cake i mean what is going to be y right so this is how much utility player one and two is going to get according to a egalitarian rule and according to egalitarian rule uh they're not going to get the same thing all right and the reason is because their disagreement points are not the same uh but when you consider 
away from the disagreement points, right? His disagreement point is 0.25. His disagreement point is 0.50. Um, so therefore, the player two is going to get, uh, don't forget the utilities though, it's like a utility of 0.2 is not 0.5. Uh, I'm sorry, utility of 0.5 is not equal to 0.5. It's around 0.7. Um, and utility of uh, 0.25, uh, 1 minus 25, I don't know what it is. Um, so anyway, if you, if you compare how much additional utility each player, uh, each negotiator gets uh, on top of their um, disagreement points, it will probably be the same because this is what egalitarian rule is aiming to do. All right. It distributes the utility, quote unquote, uh, equally. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, well, the other thing here I need to talk about is the fault question go ahead so if you put the x2 and the x1 and solve for y and subtract the d's you should get the same uh, number is that what you're saying yes okay yes and by the way yes i forgot what is y obviously uh if you solve this one or this one you're gonna get the y right uh so if uh, x2 is equal to 0.73 well then 0.73 has to satisfy i mean uh, remember, this is approximation. They're not exactly the same. Uh, squared of y. So therefore, y is actually 0.73 squared. All right, so approximately. So this is how they're going to uh, uh, split the uh, surplus. Probably this is like 0.5 something. It's higher than 0.5, I believe, but I don't know what exactly. Uh, this is how they're going to uh, sort of uh, split it. Another thing... Uh, I just uh, sort of realized, and I think I, I, I need to highlight this, this disagreement point is in the bargaining set, okay? So this disagreement point is the utility, okay? Don't, don't forget this. So this is how much utility player one and player two will get if they can, um, cannot reach to an agreement, okay? This is not how they're going to divide the surplus, okay, guys? So be, be, be careful about it. I mean, this is not, this has nothing to do, I'm sorry, I, I can't say this is nothing to do. Of course, this is related to uh, 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 the, the why. Uh, I can find it. I mean, I have to do this. 1 over 4 equals 1 minus y1, 1 half. And then 1 over 2 equals 1 minus y, oops, I'm sorry, just y2, uh, 1 half. Why do I separate as y1 and y2? Well, because uh, probably for, I mean, not probably, for sure, because this the disagreement point is inside the set. Uh, it's not on the boundary. That, that means uh, they are not going to splitting the surplus completely equally. I mean y not equally i'm sorry efficiently y1 plus y2 is going to be less than one okay uh, most probably um, so for that reason I, I i i use the notation y1 here and y2 here um, so what i want to say is the following this disagreement point is also um, uh, in utility units okay so that's that's very important the units are critical here everything is in terms of utility same for D, the disagreement point. However, the problem starts with uh, a surplus, which is like there's a cake. What is the portion of this cake you want to consume? We then transform it into our utility space by using the utility functions and then apply the bargaining rules and then come up with a solution. But don't forget these are utility values. If you want to find the uh, sort of the, the division uh, the actual division, well, then you have to reverse engineer by using the utility function and then find how they're going to split the cake. I mean, y1, y2, maybe they're equal, maybe not, or maybe they will add up to one or not, I don't know. Uh, but again, if it is efficient, I mean, if it is on the boundary, here, y1 plus y2 will be equal to one. Every, everywhere inside, it's going to be less than one because they are clearly doing something inefficient. And so they're wasting the uh, cake. Is that clear? Any, any question, guys?